All right, so what is geology? Not only do geologists address fundamental questions like the formation of our planet, what causes earthquakes, ice ages, the evolution of life, but also practical problems like how do we deal with groundwater? How do we find oil and minerals? How do we avoid building buildings in places where they might get just there where they might get destroyed by landslides or other geologic processes? These are all things that we're going to be learning about throughout this semester. Okay, so geology by definition, it's the science that deals with Earth's physical structure and substance, its history and the processes that act on it. So by studying geology that helps you understand physical science in general. So some of the things that uh, might look familiar to you and we're gonna learn throughout the semester, uh, some of these processes here. So on the left, we have Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption in the 80s. Uh, maybe you've been to the Grand Canyon National Park. We're gonna learn about how the Grand Canyon was formed. And maybe you've seen some glaciers uh, or maybe you've been to a place where there's where there used to be glaciers. So all these things we're going to be talking about throughout the semester. Some of these uh, geologic applications are close to home. Um, do we live in an area threatened by earthquakes and mudslides? The answer is yes. If you remember in July 2019, there was the large uh, earthquake in Ridgecrest that could have that was felt throughout LA, even all the way to Ventura and Santa Barbara. So if you're if you were in the area July of last year, you probably felt this earthquake. Uh, we also had some mudslides. If you're here in late 2017, early 2018, then you were here for the Thomas fire and the resulting uh, mudslide in Montecito. We're gonna be covering these topics uh, because they're really important. We have a lot of these geologic applications that are happening in our backyard. Do you ever wonder where we get our oil resources or what happens when there are spills? Uh, again, these are things that are happening in our backyard right here in California. Picture on the left is Platform Holly, which is from the state waters just offshore near Carpinteria. And then the picture on the right is Aliso Canyon. So again, if you're in 2015, this was all over the news that there was a gas leak. So we're going to learn about oil and gas applications and what happens when uh, they do leak and what the environmental implications are for that. Have you ever driven across a state and wondered why the, the mountain on the left looks different from the mountain on the right. Maybe you've driven up to Bishop area and you've seen Red Rock Canyon State Park. It is beautiful if you haven't seen it before, but it really stands out because you're driving through the Mojave Desert with, and there's nothing there. And suddenly you come across Red Rocks Canyon State Park and it's, it's very interesting to see uh, right next to the Mojave Desert. Uh, maybe you've been to Death Valley. That has some really interesting geology as well. Um, and the geology of Death Valley is so different than the geology at Red Rock Canyon. And we're gonna talk about why that is. So why I think geology and geophysics is cool is one, you get to be outside. Two, there's a variety of job settings. So you could be an office person and you can be in front of your computer all day. Um, you can be in the field. So if you like to be outside and you're one of those people that really enjoys hiking, there might be a career for you in geology uh, where you can be in the field. Uh, there's applications in the government, which is where I currently work. Uh, there's private companies and of course consulting. So there's a lot of different job settings um, that could be applicable to geology and geophysics backgrounds. There's a variety of work. I've already touched on this a little bit, um, but geologists can be employed in the mining industry, petroleum, environmental studies, paleontology, mineralogy, geochemistry. There's a lot more disciplines than what I've listed here. And I think it's a really lucrative uh, background to have because it's so versatile that you can go to a few different types of work. Do you like math, chemistry, or programming? That's great because uh, maybe then geophysics would be something that you're interested in. It has a little bit more math in there. But if you don't like it, that's okay because Geology and geophysics have a lot of uh, different applications and it's very versatile. So hopefully by the end of the semester, you learn something about geology and geophysics and may consider it as a profession. So here are some of the ways that I've applied 
uh, geology and geophysics myself. Um, Jurassic Park in real life. This was my senior um, field studies when I was at Carter School of Mines, where I used ground penetrating radar, uh, which is abbreviated GPR, to non-invasively study the subsurface for anomalies uh, to determine if there's potentially dinosaur bones in Morrison, Colorado, just like uh, how they did it in Jurassic Park. The images don't look nearly as good as this one that they have here in the movie, but it was a real life application. Uh, here's some more field work. This is me in the South Padre Island, Texas, doing my master's work uh, using ground penetrating radar to look at thinning beds of a sand dune. So I'll talk about this when we get to coastal processes uh, about dune structures and that sort of thing. Like I said, I was in the mining industry and this is my first internship. And this is a picture of my office on the top right. Uh, where I was an intern and I used ground penetrating radar to look at subsurface voids uh, prior to them moving on heavy equipment like this big truck here in the bottom right. So they, what they did at this open pit gold mine is it, it wasn't always open pit. And when I say open pit, that means that it's, uh, they, they blast and they pull the rock from the top down as opposed to an enclosed mine where they do tunneling. So it initially was a mine where they had tunnels and they would tunnel through and get the, the high quality gold. Um, but the price of gold has increased so much that it was more lucrative for them to make it an open pit mine. So uh, they just blasted from the top down. And sometimes there are these voids where they didn't know where tunneling had already occurred. So we use GPR to figure out where those were before they put on these large trucks because those heavy trucks could fall right through a void that's in the subsurface. So from my experience working in a gold mine, I then worked for a company that developed the software that was used for mining. And at this company, um, I was an intern for them and I would do uh, software testing as well as programming and software development. Um, one of the things that I learned most about this experience was that I'm not a very good programmer, but uh, it was a really good experience that I was able to have uh, to learn about what it means to work in an office and to work on computers and program. And um, that helped me decide that maybe being in the field in a gold mine wasn't the best option for me full time. So an internship after that is I worked in the environmental industry. I was an environmental science intern at Argonne National Labs, which is near Chicago, um, for the Department of Energy. And I used groundwater modeling data um, to look at the environmental impact of having solar panels installed in the desert. So I went from one office job to another office job, but uh, in a completely different application. So I went from software to environmental. And what I learned most about this job is what it meant to work for the government and working at the pace of the government. So that was a really good experience because there's pros and cons to working for the government, which I'll probably talk about later throughout the semester. Uh, then I did my master's at Texas A&M. And from there, uh, I got an internship in the oil and gas industry. My first one was with Stone Energy in Houston. Uh, that's a picture of me. Um, on a rig, my first rig in Louisiana. And from there, I knew that I um, was good at doing oil and gas. And there was something that um, I really understood and I liked. And so that was the career path that I chose. So from there, I worked for Century Exploration Resources in Bakersfield as a geoscientist. And then I was with Chevron in Bakersfield as a geophysicist. And here's a picture from a rig of a well that I drilled with Chevron in uh, 2014. And now I work in the regulatory world, uh, also for the government with the Department of Interior. Like I said, I'm part of the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. And one of the perks to this job is every once in a while I get to take a helicopter offshore. And here's a picture of me flying over platform Irene, which is just north of Santa Barbara um, on the map here. It's uh, the one that's furthest north. So here we are uh, in Ventura area. And if you go all the way up the coast, uh, Irene is the one that's 
north of Santa Barbara, but these are where all the platforms exist along the California coast. Much about this long list of themes, we'll be going over them throughout the semester and I'll do a brief introduction of each of these individually. Okay, the first is that the earth has an internal structure. The earth is not a homogeneous ball, but instead has a bunch of layers. We have the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, asthenosphere, lithosphere, and the crust. And on top of the crust here, uh, where we live, is where uh, the crust meets the atmosphere and the oceans. The Earth has an outer layer consisting of moving plates. Uh, we'll be having a whole lecture devoted just to plate tectonics. Um, plate tectonics was discovered in the 1960s, which is a relatively new concept, considering how important it is to the study of geology. Uh, the crust and uppermost part of the mantle forms about 100 kilometer thick shell called the lithosphere. And there are these large cracks that separate the shell into discrete pieces that slowly move relative to one another. And these are the um, pieces broken up around the globe. We're sitting here in the uh, North American plate, which is shaded in this brown color. And right here uh, in California, we are butt up against the North American plate and the Pacific plate. But you can see all these other little plates uh, around the globe. And most of these, uh, where these plates boundaries occur, we see earthquakes, we see volcanoes, and we see the formation of mountain ranges. The Earth is a complex system with many interconnected realms. The Earth is not static, but dynamic. And uh, the planet's surfaces, oceans, atmospheres all interact with each other. So here, a picture on the right is the water cycle. And uh, the water cycle describes how all of these processes are uh, connected and how you need each process in order to have the entire cycle working. So we have um, transpiration, which then creates precipitation and runoff which goes into lakes and uh, they can be, they can stay in lakes or they can go into the groundwater and groundwater flow then can go back into a larger body of water or um, at the ocean. And then you have evaporation, transpiration and so on and so forth. So the earth is complex and even just the water cycle is one of many um, cycles that the earth goes through. Okay, the Earth is a planet, <laughs> and we have different processes than other planets within our solar system, like plate tectonics, and we also have an oxygen-rich atmosphere. We have liquid water ocean, and we have abundant life. The Earth is very, 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 very old. And geologic data indicates that the Earth is 4.54 billion, with a B, billion years old. So sometimes, um, Geologic time can be difficult to conceptualize. So we're going to be talking about how we can try to wrap our head around what 4.54 billion years old actually means. So plate movement uh, occurs only at a rate of a few centimeters per year and can move a continent thousands of kilometers at this rate um, over millions of years. So when we talk about plate tectonics and how they've changed the Earth. We're talking about a much larger scale. Uh, we're talking about moving huge amounts of volume, large plates over thousands of miles. Uh, geologic time represents the duration of history. So when we talk about how long man has been around or how long uh, uh, you've been alive, uh, we talk about these small gears, um, but geologic time represents the entire duration of history. And what do I mean by that? Um, okay, so here's the, the geologic time scale, and it divides that Earth's history into these intervals. So here we have eon, era, period, epoch, and then these are the approximate millions of years um, old relative to each of these uh, different uh, divisions. So um, here we are in, uh, actually here we are at the top, we're in the Holocene epoch in the Quaternary period. 
the Cenozoic era, all in the Phanerozoic eon. So here's uh, our little Velociraptor friend, and he was around approximately 150 million years ago in, let's just say, the late Jurassic, which is part of the Mesozoic era. So these are the words that we describe how old things are and uh, what period or epoch that they're from. Internal and external processes drive geologic phenomena. Internal processes include convection, uh, which is what drives plate movement. And we're gonna talk about that more in an upcoming lecture. But some of these external processes are driven from energy coming from the earth and the sun. And uh, for example, the movement of air and water on the earth's soft surface uh, causes for transport and accumulation of materials. So this might look familiar. This is part of Anacapa Island with the Channel Islands. And did you ever wonder how it got this shape? Um, we're gonna talk about erosion and how movement of air and water causes uh, erosion and for rocks to look the way they do. Geologic phenomena can affect society. We've already talked about this briefly, but things like volcanoes, earthquakes, landslides uh, are all vital to everyone. We need to understand the link between geology, our environment, and society. So here's a picture from um, Hurricane Harvey in Texas in 2017. You can see how high the water actually came. That all you can really see is the building tops. These are just roofs, and uh, flooding was probably 10 to 15 feet high, and that's a lot of water. So this affects our society, our society because we need to understand what the risks are of building in these places and living in areas that could be affected by hurricanes or flooding. Physical aspects of the Earth system linked to life processes. So all life on the planet depends on physical features as the composition of soil the temperature, humidity, and composition of the atmosphere, and the flow of surface and subsurface water. So here we have a control of that, of that water by building dams. And so we have an influence on some of these physical processes. Here's, so here's a picture of Hoover Dam, uh, which is between the border of Nevada and Arizona. Okay, the earth has changed dramatically in many ways over geologic time and continues to change. So the landscape that you see outside your window today is not what would have been there thousands, millions, or even billion years ago. And some of these processes we can see within our own time frame. Um, maybe you've seen how uh, Casitas Lake is dramatically decreasing in volume and you can kind of see the effect of drought. Um, and that's something that you can see in your own lifetime. So some, some geologic processes take thousands of years, some take millions of years, and some take tens of years. So here's a picture, an aerial photograph of an oxbow lake in Russia. And we're going to talk about oxbow lakes, but basically you can see where the river is currently flowing and where the, the river had occurred before. So this is where the river path used to be, but that still exists in our geologic record, even though the water is incurring flowing there. Okay, most of the resources that we use come from geologic materials. So we use vast quantities of oil, gas, coal, metal, concrete, clay, fertilizer, and other materials, um, everything from uh, the granite countertops in your bathroom to the precious metals that you have in your laptop. Uh, so here's a picture of a gold mine in, in uh, Colorado. This is an open pit gold mine. Okay, science comes from observation and people make scientific discoveries. So science does not consist of subjective guesses, but rather consistent set of objective statements resulting in the application of scientific method. So scientific ideas do not appear out of nowhere. They're a result of human efforts. So what that means is that these aren't just theories, that these are um, hard data in science that I'm teaching you. So 
scientific uh, method is applied to physical sciences and it's definitely applied to geology. So that's it for, uh, for this prelude and brief introduction of geology.